and the morning starts by walking the dogs and getting the plane out, get some fuel, getting ready for a beautiful day and a short flight here in Florida. Good morning. Hola. What's that on your head? Brand new light speeds? Brand spanking new. Yeah. I got the old ones. Granted, I gave, it was a, a, a birthday present, I think, yeah. yeah. And then everybody ended up using them or giving rides and everything. So Alyssa ended up with used light speeds. <laughs> they were used more than I used them <laughs> by demo pilots. Yeah, and that was your that was your birthday present. So we got a nice new set, and, yeah, I, nice. and now I have the old ones, and I don't care. But what what are the features on that one? Like I don't know. I'm just learning it. It's the new Delta Zulu, so we'll find out when I fly. But I know they do uh, talk in your headset, and um, I don't know. We'll find out. All right. Anyways, well, they got yeah. like warnings or something, right? Yeah, I, I don't think there's like massive changes, but also they're chargeable. I which I think is the uh, they're the first to offer that. So. That's kind of cool. And so we're in a 650 and we're going to head uh, over to Orlando North Airport. The story there was there was um, a Sea Ray built with one of our 110 engines. And the 110 engine worked well on the Sea Ray, except uh, it doesn't seem to work that well on this one. So why? Well, the airplane was uh, built originally by, by an individual that was um, a YouTube pilot and an airline pilot and uh, his name slips me but I, I used to always refer to him as Peanut Brittle out of, uh, out of all things because he would visit here and he would always have uh, bags of Peanut Brittle that he would give to his friends and stuff. So nice man, he's, uh, he's no longer with us and somebody else is now uh, owning the airplane, Mike something, and uh, Mark. Mark, yeah, and Mark's having uh, basically trying to get this thing in the air, and um, we're we're just basically going over there to look everything over. I saw the plane once before. It was a Sea Ray that was built, kind of uh, outside the norm. It had a lot of paintwork on it. It looked like a dragon, and it had claws on the wheel pans and. Um, well, it had wheel pans, but it's still going to land on water. So it, some, some some little strange things. It also had the switching was supposed to be done through Bluetooth and all that. So kind of highly experimental. But and and I do recall like the engine wiring was. Um, I wasn't happy with that part. It was kind of stuffed in a box behind the seat, and then it was supposed to be Bluetooth switched from some some iPad screen. So hopefully that's been changed. Uh, the engine is not running 100% smooth is, is the story that we've heard and uh, Alyssa has been working with him um, on trying to troubleshoot remotely but considering how close we are it's a good Saturday morning trip we'll fly over there and see for ourselves. can see why it's called seaplane capital of the world. You see those big ass turkeys? So we pulled in and sure enough there was a 650 sitting there that looked exactly like ours. All right, so we came out here today to work on this Sea Ray, and uh, obviously, as you can see, it's a beauty. In fact, it's a, it's a gorgeous airplane. It's got a hand-painted uh, um, decor of a dragon because uh, the original builder flew the um, spy plane, which was affectionately referred to as a dragon, I believe. And I think that's how that came about. It's done by someone famous in uh, here in Florida, in the land. And it has the, well, here's the U-2 that he flew. And uh, it has the Viking 110 on it, which now has some years on it. The airplane never really flew. It's, it's uh, the original owner has passed away, now owned by someone else, like I said, and uh, uh, we just kind of came out here because the engine was supposedly very rough and we found one cylinder wasn't firing and some wiring that had been done and some harnesses 
uh, cut and spliced and lengthened and so we got that all fixed up and this will be our first try see how she runs all right so we've started troubleshooting we've found uh this cylinder's not running so we're gonna find out what's going on if you look closely here towards the left you'll see the ground wires for the computer the bolt was never tightened either the fuel injector that was not operating the wiring was loose as seen here we tested the injectors and it's not working. All this wiring for the engine had just been stuffed into an undersized metal box. seconds to figure out it was running on three cylinders when we first started it up and what's amazing to me there have been all kinds of auto mechanics and different mechanics there and nobody's been telling the owner that so they actually flew the airplane on three cylinders yeah probably but see now Fuel, fuel says 35. Yeah, and is that what it should be? Yes. yes. Well, no, it should be 43. 43, I remember you saying But, that, but yeah. that's just more of a... But see, now if I go go back... And there's a scare box. Yeah, that reads completely whack, too. Yeah, that's not right, either. Yeah. Sounds good, the engine, but obviously the wiring's all... Is there anybody behind me? Uh, there's a car turning around. Weird. Mark Kendrick. Mark? Yeah, not Captain. Unfortunately, I'm not Captain Stephen Pee Wee Barber. Okay. But this guy, we got to do a little tribute to him because this is a U 2 pilot. There's only 75 of them in the whole world right now that have flown that aircraft. He's the one who built this plane. They and, flew uh, it at our station. And you're the one who got it going. <laughs> <laughs> and he has a, a picture of it on the tail. Yeah, that's his uh, squadron. And, and he also flew, after he left the military, it's really important because we need to advertise a guy, he flew a 767, which is where the November 767 Tango Romeo came from. All right, so obviously an accomplished pilot. Yeah, very accomplished pilot. Well, and... Uh, and he picked the right engine. Well, what do you got? Yeah, a Viking. And show us what you got up there. We got a Viking 110. All right. And we got an Airprop 1750. And how did you end up with this? I acquired it from Stephen Pee Wee Barber's wife. Okay. A lovely little old English lady. Fortunately, I'm English as well. That helped with the sale. <laughs> and, no. uh, and I promised her that once we get this going, and thanks to Jan, we're hopefully there, I can take her up, which is, was a dream for her. So hopefully we'll get to take her up. That should That'd be really, be really nice. That'd yeah. be an amazing day. Now you had some issues with the uh, the engine, or or actually with the wiring. We found out now. Yep, it was the wiring. I, I I changed the plugs, the alternator, the gear. We obviously did all the upgrades with you, Jan, the gearbox and the flywheel. Yep. I put a new uh, starter motor on it. I put new spark plugs, new uh, uh, what do you call them? The uh, coils. Uh, coils, coils, yep. and new uh, fuel injectors. Still couldn't solve the problem. You come along in two hours and bam. <laughs> Problem solved. It was a wiring problem on one of the cylinders. Yeah, so we had a, a look like a harness that had been extended, uh, basically a cut and splice job, and that was probably because uh, with the engine up back there, the uh, and then the the wiring was uh, uh, routed to these uh, these boxes here and some some other things that were kind of unique to this airplane, and the length of wire required was more than what was in the original harness so we found that we found the splices and we fixed it and it's running good what a nice paint job what's, yeah beautiful what's uh, the chris story cruz, chris cruz the artist it's actually signed if you look here you'll see this where he signed it chris cruz artist by it's all done by hand okay. literally all brushed by hand yeah he's like over in delay in florida right yeah yep. yeah he's in florida he's a top artist in florida wow that is gorgeous yep. mm-hmm 
And what's the story now? You're gonna, you're gonna, gonna fly. You're gonna fly, use fly, it. Fly, fly, fly it. Fly, fly. Yeah. <laughs> and you live in the seaplane capital of the yeah, world? Yeah, Tavares. Where else, man? You've got to have a seaplane in Tavares. Right. And, and you've got to check out my video on YouTube. It's uh, Seaplane Base in Tavares. Got to check it out. It's uh, all about flightsim.com. Have some fun with that as well. What's the YouTube? Uh, YouTube is Mark Kendry. Just type in Mark Kendry. It's simple. I know fancy names. Okay. Just Mark Kendry and check out some videos all about Microsoft Flight Simulator Aviation in general. Just good fun. Okay. Good fun. And you enjoy, uh, I mean, you live right here and... Uh... Are there restaurants and things you can fly to? Loads, loads, man. Uh -huh. You've got you've got restaurants all over. You've got some in Orlando you can go to. You've got loads in um, out on uh, down south, down by Cedar Key. You've got another few. Oh, they, they're all over Florida. There's actually a list around from the Flying Gators that shows all the restaurants there are to fly to by seaplane. Tell us about this panel. The panel I had done by Angel, who's one of the top Sea Ray guys here in uh, Tavares. And uh, basically, we totally changed the panel. We put small mini iPads with the carbon backdrop to give it a more modern look. We put the new um, C-Ray flaps. We added those in there, so we got the proper button-operated flaps. And then we also fitted an eye-level autopilot, which is fitted on it as well. So we've got an autopilot on here as well, which is pretty cool. Is it easy to lift the front to look inside? Oh uh, Yeah, yeah, I can do that for you. We literally just take this open here. It works with V-Power. Let's pull this up. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it, man. There we go. And look, are there any wires? Because of the eye level system. It's all iPad. Okay. And so it's very organized. Very organized. And when it comes to uh, circuit breakers, those circuit breakers, you get a warning on the screen that tells you the exact problem. So you haven't got to try and work out what the problem is. It will tell you on the screen what the problem is on the iPad, which is pretty cool. Very good. Yeah, it's pretty sophisticated stuff. Well, thanks for showing it, and we're glad we were able to fix it, and uh, yeah. I hope you come over to New Smyrna and visit us. You're going to be maintaining it, buddy. All right. I ain't going nowhere else, so thanks. Great job, man. Love yeah. this company. Fantastic. Brilliant job.